Uh, hi, everybody. We're continuing in 7.2, and we're up to uh, theorem 7.6, uh, a sufficient condition for diagonalization. So if you have an n by n matrix A, a square matrix, if such a matrix has distinct eigenvalues, that means means different means n different eigenvalues, n eigenvalues, and they're all different from each other, then the corresponding eigenvectors are linearly independent and A is diagonalizable. Now, I just want to be, I wanted to talk a little bit about this whole idea of, of necessary sufficient, all that kind of stuff. So the, the conditions in, in 7.6 is sufficient, but not necessary for diagonalization. Meaning that if, uh, a, if A has N distinct eigenvalues, then the eigenvectors is going to be linear independent, and uh, but it's possible that you know A doesn't have n distinct eigenvalues, and you still have the 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 uh, linearly independent. So it's like saying, um, if it rains, I will come to your house. Well, it's possible that if it, I never said I would, but it's possible that it won't rain. I'll still come to your house. I never said I never said I never said anything like that. You know. So in general, I I, I wrote here. I put it on the side. Whenever you have a statement, if A, then B, that means that A is sufficient for B and B is necessary for A. And if you have only if A, then B, that means A is necessary for B and B is sufficient for A. And that is the, uh, just a general, so in our case, we have if A, then B, and we're saying that it's sufficient. So our case is really this, this uh, first guy right there. But again, it's just a general thing about proofs in general. And, and you know, I guess another thing I want to say about proofs is that a lot of times students, you know, think of proofs as, oh, it's just so annoying and I need this guy, I just want to learn how to do this stuff. But if you don't want, if you're not into proofs, it's like saying, I just want to not have any idea why what I'm saying is just, but just tell me stuff and I have no idea if it's really true. How do you know, it's, how do you know even now, I might be, we might be telling you stuff that's all lies. How do you know? Well, if you can prove it, then you know that it's true. And not only that, but if you can, when you can prove it, you have a deeper understanding and a greater context, and you'll be you'll be better at whatever you do, whether you're going to be uh, an engineer or a, or a computer scientist or a mathematician or a physicist. Whatever you're going to do, you know, you know, if you're if you're if you're taking linear algebra, chances are you're serious, you know, about math and all that. Uh, if you can prove it, then it means you understand it and you uh, have the, a better context and a better understanding is all good. Anyway, that's my little um, little speech. Now let's now let's go to the actual proof. So we're gonna we're gonna so there's only one direction here, if a then b. So we're gonna let lambda one, lambda two, dot 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 up to lambda n. We're gonna let that be n distinct eigenvalues. Meaning I mean they're all eigenvalues of a and they are all different from each other. And the corresponding eigenvectors for these eigenvalues are gonna be x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. Now we wanna prove that these, these uh, x vectors, these x, these n eigenvectors here, I'm looking at right here, we wanna prove that they're linearly independent. So what we're gonna do is something with a called proof by contradiction, meaning that we're gonna assume the opposite. We're going to assume that they are dependent. We're going to assume that they're that 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 they're dependent, and we're going to show that that assumption will lead to a, a contradiction. And this is what is known uh, in the business as proof by contradiction. So uh, we want to consider the eigenvectors to be ordered uh, so that the first may as well, you're not, you're not losing any generality by saying that. So you want to order them in a way where the first M eigenvectors are independent. Uh, but when you get to the M plus first, uh, they're dependent. So once you wait in that, so, so like the first five, you know, uh, are, are independent, but once you get, once you have the sixth uh, one, then it becomes dependent. Uh, and of course, uh, M is less than N. So, um, so uh, x m plus one, the m plus first uh, eigenvector 
because this is now now because this set is now linearly dependent, this last eigenvector can be written as a linear combination of the other ones. So x m plus one is is c one x one plus c two x two plus c m x m for some constants, uh, c some kind of c. And of course, they can't all be zero because if they're all zero, then there is no you know it's just a mess. Anyway, um, multiplication of both sides. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do a very cool uh, thing here. We're going to multiply uh, each. So taking this equation, equation one, whoops, we're going to multiply everything by the matrix A. So you have AXM1 equals ACX1, AC2, X2, ACMX, da, da, da. And since these are all eigenvectors, every time I multiply A times one of these matrices, I, it winds up being lambda times that same matrix. So what happens now, what happens now is you have a x m plus one becomes lambda m plus one x m plus one. A times c one x one becomes uh, becomes c one times lambda one x one. Uh, and this and this guy over here becomes c two times lambda two x two. Da, 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 da. So we have a whole big equation we're calling equation two that lambda x put lambda m plus one and X times one, that product equals this whole uh, line here. Now, similarly, I'll do a second, I could do a second thing. I could take equation one, and instead of multiplying it by the matrix A, I could just multiply it by the, by the scalar lambda m plus one. So if I multiply equation one by the scalar uh, lambda m plus one, I get equation three, lambda m plus one, X m plus one, and then C1, lambda M plus one, X1, C2, lambda M plus one, X2, da 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 da. Now, uh, notice that equation two and equation three, they equal the same thing on, on the, in fact, let me highlight that. They equal the same thing. And since they're equal to the same thing, I can set this whole sucker here equal to that whole sucker there, which is exactly what we're gonna do. And, or, or what we're gonna do, actually, we're gonna do a little sucker. We're going to subtract equation two from equation three. That's that's nicer. And then when you when you this is the same thing. So I subtract to get zero or the zero vector, I should say. And and here when I here when I subtract, I'm going to get c one times lambda m one minus lambda one plus c two times lambda m one m plus lambda m plus one minus lambda two x two da 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 da. da. Now we know that the first m eigenvectors are linearly independent, which means the only way that this can equal zero is if all of the coefficients are zero. But wait a second, we know that not all of the C's are zero. We know that. So that means that if any, if, if for, for whatever non-zero C's that there are, they have to be, um, they have to be at least some, uh, you know, uh, so one of these one of these guys has to be uh, zero because not let, let's say C let's say let's say a C two is not equal to zero. So C because not all of the C's are zero. So if C two doesn't equal zero. That means lambda m plus one minus lambda two does equal zero. But we said wait a second. We're we're saying our 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 given is that these are distinct uh, eigenvalues. I mean, distinct means different. Well, we, that is a that is a contradiction. Hence, our assumption that that the that the vectors were our assumption that they were linearly dependent must be false, and it must be that they are linearly independent. And once they're linearly independent, then we use set theorem seven point five, and now to to to, say, to show that it's diagonalizable, which is what we'd already just did the last video. And that, my friend, is awesome. So let's say, for example, you have uh, a matrix. Here's a matrix A. Now, A is triangular. So the eigenvalues, we learned already that a triangular matrix has eigenvalues of the main diagonal. So the eigenvalues are going to be 1, 0, and negative 3. Uh, let me highlight that. Just, uh, oops, let me just highlight that. I think it's nice to highlight that. And highlight that. And highlight the, the last sucker right there. And we're good. And so these are the eigen uh, values, and they're all and there's it's a three by three, and there are three eigenvalues, and they're all distinct. 
So therefore, by the theorem we just uh, proved, A is diagonalizable. How, now, how do you diagonalize uh, A? Well, that, that you have to use the process for diagonalization that we, that we learned already. But this is telling us that we will succeed if we try. Uh, last thing I want to just say, uh, this I want to do very briefly. I don't want to really dwell on this, but you, you can diagonalize diagonalization and linear transformation. So we've been discussing diagonalization in terms of matrices. We could also uh, d discuss it in terms of linear transformations. And that makes sense because the linear transformation really winds up being a matrix, you know, times the vector and so forth. And, um, and, and uh, that's it. I, I'm not going to really dwell on this. And I'm not going to test you on any of this, uh, but it is really interesting that it, you know, it all kind of relates. Uh, let's just go very quickly through it. Um, okay, so um, so for linear transformation T from from V to V, uh, does there exist a basis B for V such that the matrix for T relative to B is diagonal? And the answer is yes provided the standard matrix for T is diagonalizable. So let's find the basis here. So T is a, is a, is a linear transformation from R3 to R3, and T of X1, X2, X3 is X1 minus X2 minus X3, comma, X1 plus 3X2 plus X3, comma, uh, negative 3X1 plus X2 minus X3. And if it's po if possible, we want to find a basis for B, uh, a basis B for R3, such that the matrix for T relative to B is diagonal. And this is putting a lot of stuff that we learned all together in one, one beautiful package. So let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, here we go. So the standard matrix for T is one, one, negative three, negative. Now, how do, where do we get these, where do we get these, um, these uh, numbers? Um, so we, we get these numbers, if you notice, we're basically taking uh, the coefficients, one, negative one, negative one, and that's our top row. Then we take the coefficients here, one, three, one, that's our middle row. Then we take the coefficients of this last guy, negative three, one, negative one, uh, that's all, and that's what we learned already. So from example four, we know that A is diagonalizable. We saw this matrix already. See, isn't that, isn't that nice how we give you a matrix that you've seen already so you don't have to go through all that work? So the three linear, so the three linearly independent eigenvectors found in example four can be used to find the basis uh, B, and so B is uh, negative one zero one one negative one uh, four negative one one one, and therefore the matrix for T relative to this basis is going to be uh, is going to be uh, D. Is equal to two zero 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 negative two zero 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 three, and let me just show you example four. We, we just to look at that again to reinforce ourselves, and that's really going to be uh, the end of this uh, seven point two. I uh, have example four, so you see, uh, so we had that same matrix, and we diagonalized it, and we got down to the whole thing, and we eventually you know, got down to that sucker right there. So that's where that came from, and that is. Awesome, but basically, you know, it is kind of the same. It is kind of the same thing that we did, just in, just in different words, uh, or, or different. Yeah, different. You know, it, it's 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 a, it's just a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's the same thing. Well, it's an example, uh, but it's 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 kind of the same thing. Uh, just it, just looking viewing it as a transformation rather than viewing it as a matrix multiplication. It's kind of, but it's really all the same thing. Anyway. Uh, that that concludes 7.2. I've uh, our next video is going to be a, a part, uh, just one part of uh, 7.3 uh, about symmetric matrices and diagonalization and that kind of cool stuff. So I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to stop the video here actually, and we're going to oops, and we're going to um, we're going to conclude uh, 7.2, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.